one of the pieces on my program, um, which which I'm very fond of, uh, is Ravel's uh, Le Tombeau de Coupra. And this is a um, this this piece was written uh, during and then after the First World War, and it was uh, each movement is dedicated to a person that Ravel knew who had died in in what was called the Great War. Then um, and but it, it also was. Um, a, a um, kind of monument to French music and, and French culture. And what Ravel did, he, he wrote six different uh, movements, which I'll play different segments of for you now. Um, each one very different. Um, and, um, and they all sort of referred to, uh, to famous French music or forms from the past. Um, so the first movement is called Prelude, which is a very you know, common thing for people to write. And you usually had a lot of like figurative writing and, and he does like a... That's fascinating about it is there's um, there's uh, this older style in a way, but then it's also updated for the 20th century. There are um, chords and things in in what I played for you now, and some of the other ones too that uh, almost sound like they could be in jazz. Um, and so that that's the first movement. The second movement is a is um, you know what's called a fugue um, is a very um, was a very like kind of uh, uh, everybody learned to do this in music school. Uh, and so it was considered a very academic form, but Ravel makes it very beautiful and moving. Um, starts like. Third movement is called a forlang, which was a kind of an old French dance. Um, and this is probably what actually set Ravel off. Um, uh, one of the first things he did in preparation um, for for writing his piece was to take an older French forlang and transcribe it and rewrite it. Um, and but his is very. Um, it's my maybe my favorite piece from this set. But it's 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 very very beautiful. But it's it's very kind of quirky sounding to it. Uh. And so on. Um, the fourth movement is called Rigodon, and it's a real kind of change of pace. Um, it's very uh, active and um, almost sounds like to me like um, Ravel, he grew up. Um, he, he, he was um, Basque um, from the Spanish near part of, of France. And then one of the things you had there was like sort of clog dancing. Um, and to me, I, I hear like almost like percussive little steps in here when I hear. <laughs> like jump my hands over each other it's almost uh, makes me think of people jumping around in this way and, and maybe the composer thought of it that too uh, fifth movement is a, a menuet which um, you know anybody who's played like you know Suzuki violin or piano or whatever they are used to finding menuets of Bach um, this one's a little different again um, but it, you'll, you'll recognize some of the same things it's Reflective, uh, and then the the ending um, piece is is a toccata, um, which um, which was a thing that many 20th century composers had written were writing in this form. Um, this is in a way the most sort of up to date and 20th century thing that he does. Um, a lot of the 20th century toccatas had this sort of um, uh, edgy quality to them, and the notes that repeat very fast and you know 
um, slightly dissonant patterns. He has all these things too, but it's very elegant as Ravel could be, um, and it you know it ends the whole piece with um, great brilliance. <laughs> So that's a, you know, that's a little uh, condensed version of Ravel Tombow de Couperin. I hope you can come and, and hear the whole thing. It's really wonderful. <laughs>